Hi again. Uh, here we are to continue with our, our parse app, the new parse app here. And uh, so far I've got my, you know, my simple single page application working here. And uh, I added a, a couple just small styles to, you know, set the size of the text and to kind of style these text or, you know, it's input fields a little bit um, just to make them a little easier to read. But other than that, this is exactly what, what I had in the, uh, the last video. So uh, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to talk about the register and log in, okay? And you can't really log in until you register, so let's do the register first, right? So what we'll do here is what we want to, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get, uh, you know, allow you to add a username, a password, confirm your password, submit, and then create a new user account. And then you should be able to go to log in, and then you'll be able to log in with, the, with that user account. And then later we'll add a logout button maybe and something to show that you're logged in. But first of all, we have to we have to register. So so let's do that first. So how do we do that? Well, uh, right now I'm using this parse app here, and you've probably already created your parse project. And if you haven't, you can watch my other video, and it goes through the whole thing. Um, that one covers the registration and login too. So we're kind of overlapping, but uh, you'll need to have a, a a parse app that you've created. And then the parse app is going to have um, uh, a, 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 an app key and a JavaScript key. And we need to find those and add those to our document. Um, parse is pretty easy to work with. I'm going to go to the dashboard first. And you'll see that they give you this, uh, this quick start button here. So I'm using the, the garage sale app that I created. And if I go to the, the quick start um, it will just sort of walk me through the whole process so um, of setting up the app. So I'll click on data because that's the kind of app I'm going to make, uh, web because we're going to make a web app, and then we can do a new project or an existing project. These are actually almost identical, so it really doesn't even matter which one you choose. I'm going to choose the second one here, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this line right here, and this allows us to import the... Um, the parse JavaScript into our project, right? So I'll copy that, just copy this whole tag right there, and then we'll switch to our index.html, and I will paste that into the top of the page, okay? And let's test our app, because this is actually going to present a problem for us, right? And this should be looking for parse 1.4.2.min.js, right? So if I test my project here, I refresh it, you'll see that in the console I'm getting an error and it says file parse 1.4.2 min.js, right? Error, file not found, right? So why is that? Well, if you look carefully, um, they in, in the link here, they don't include the HTTP colon, okay? And if your files are on the server, you don't need this. But if you're testing your files locally on the desktop, you have to put this in or it won't be able to find them, okay? Essentially, you need to tell the desktop what protocol you want to use to go look for this file, right? And I, at least that's what I think what's going on here, right? So, so we have to include that. So make sure you include that. And then now, you know, if we go back and we test one more time, no error, right? So that's looking pretty good. Um, now we want to get this thing set up, right? So the other thing we need to do is you need to go and get the API key and the JavaScript key for your project. So I'll switch to parse again, and I'm still looking at the quick start page, and they give you the code right here. So you need this parse initialize, and if, if your app is up here in the corner, then these values will be the API and JavaScript key for your, um, for your project, right? So just copy this line. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'll go back to my project, and I'm going to go to main.js, and I will put it at the top of the page. Okay, it's going to be the first thing up at the top of the page here, and I'll say, I'll make a comment, you know, initialize parse. Okay? And there we go, right? So now we're all set. Maybe I'll make a little note here. I'll say, you know, page navigation. Okay, oops, N navigation, wait, navigation. There we go, right? So um, so now we've got that set up. Um, 
Okay, so so now we're all ready. So once we initialize parse, then we can do things with parse, okay? So the next thing we want to do is, actually, you know what? I want to go back here. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to index.html, and let's find our register div. So this div down here is essentially the page that is the register form, right? Let's give this form an ID. Let's call it register form. Um, just to keep things simple, and I, I like using ID names on very specific elements. You know, for styles, I always use class names, but when I have JavaScript that needs to talk to a particular element, I like an ID. Um, rather than using a selector that is more complicated, right? You know, based on like the parent or, you know, some other criteria, right? If I want to get to this form, I want to give it exactly the name that it will need to identify it, right? So I'm going to call this register form. And then the uh, the input and the password fields here, I'm going to give them an ID also. So I'll say ID. And I'm going to use sort of a naming convention. Everything inside the form or inside this div called register will begin with register, right? So I'll call this one register username, right? And then maybe here I'll call this one, you know, register password. And then I'll call this one ID register password two, okay? Very creative, I know, but uh, anyway, those will be very specific, and we'll be able to find these elements with their ID name, okay? And I think that's that's perfectly okay. I don't really see anything wrong with this, right? Um, you know, we'll do all, we'll handle this stuff somewhere else, but this name will be able to point directly to this element, and we'll only register a listener to the form, so I don't think it's a big deal that we register one listener, right? If we were registering hundreds of listeners, then we might want to you know, be a little more careful about how we how we approach this. But if we're just registering one listener, we can just register it right at the beginning of our of our app, and that should be fine, right? Um, so anyway, so there we go. So we've got that set up, and now what we want to do is we want to handle when you submit this form. Okay, so when you submit the form, what's going to happen, right? So we'll switch to main JS, and uh, what I'm going to do is. Scroll down a little ways here, and I'll put uh, a comment in their register form. And what I want to do is use some jQuery here to say register form. Okay, so there's the ID name, and we'll just use the shortcut method submit. Okay, so I'll just make up jQuery's, you know, submit method here and give it a function, okay? And the function that we pass in will get an event object. And it's important that we get catch this event object in this case. So I'm going to um, make sure that I type event in here. And I always do that for, I always name this event. Some people name it E or EV, right? Um, but it's important that we have this event object because when we submit the form, one of the things that will happen is that um, JavaScript will refresh the page okay if we submit a form okay um, so let, let's we'll test that right like if I go to my site here and I refresh and then I cl I click the the submit button here well actually I guess it's not really refreshing but sometimes it'll refresh and you know probably when you don't want it to it'll it'll do it right but if it refreshes the page then we have a problem because it refreshes all of our JavaScript and remember our project is a single page application so we can't refresh the page right we have to have everything running in the current page and the page can't can't reload itself it can load data from outside but it can't we can't reload the page itself okay so what we're going to do is we're going to type in event prevent default and what this is going to do is it's going to prevent the default behavior of the form which is to load another you know item right okay or let's to load the form um, action right so uh, so there we go and then the next thing we're gonna do is is you know just to make things easy why don't we just collect the username and the passwords right and then we'll do a simple error check for now 
So I'm going to say register username dot val. Okay, so here I'm going to target the input element called register username. And since it's a form element, if I put dot val on the end, it gives me the, the value or what you've typed into the form. Okay. And then I'll say password. And if you remember, we had that naming convention. So this was register password, right? It's kind of nice to have a convention, right? Because then, you know, you don't even have to remember exactly what the thing is. You can kind of just figure it out because you followed a pattern, right? So uh, so there we go. So now we've got uh, the password, right? And we're using .val to get the value from the field, right? And then we had a second password. Why don't we call this one password number two? And then we'll get this one also. And I think I called this one register password two, okay? And, and I know that um, these are the dashes, not the underscore, because whenever I name ID names, I always use the dash and not the underscore. And that's my naming convention. So, you know, I, I encourage everyone to develop their own naming convention and follow that. And you can see I'm following it here and I'm following it here. Um, you know, and essentially everywhere, right? And that's that's good, right? So I, I always know what to expect from myself. And so, you know, I make fewer spelling mistakes and errors that way, okay? So uh, so here we go. So I've got the username, the password, and the second password. Later, I'm, I wanna come back and do some error checking and some maybe form validation and maybe work that out with the form so it kinda highlights something if you make a mistake or don't fill something in. But for right now, let's just get it working get the registration system working and I'll just do a really simple password confirmation. So what I'll say is I'll, I'll, I'll say here password equals password number two. Okay, so if these two are the same, then we know that um, that you know you're con confirm that you confirm your password and you typed it correctly. And then in that case we can um, you know sign up with parse. So what we're going to do with parse to sign up is we'll make a new user object, okay? And the way that we do that is we say, you know, we make a variable here to hold our user object, and then we say new parse, uppercase P, dot uppercase user, okay? So we'll make a new instance of the parse user object, okay? So that's a brand new fresh user object with no features. And then what we'll do is we'll say user.set. And essentially what we're doing is we're setting properties on this, this user object. And the first property we're gonna set is username, okay? And then our username is going to be set to the value here in the username variable. So that's what you typed into the field. Remember that's the value from the field. And so now that's set as the username for this new user object. And then we'll say user.set password. And then we'll set the value of password to password, right? Okay, and there's some other properties you can set. You can set as many properties as you like. It's probably best to, um, if your user has a lot of like extra properties, it's probably better to create another table, right? Um, called maybe user profile and then save all the user information into user profile and just save the password and username you know just the you know really core sec secure stuff into the user table okay um, and then you can link the two tables together maybe we'll do that later we'll, we'll set up a, a profile uh, like a user profile object but for right now we've got the user we've got the username and the password um, they also allow you to set an email address in here I didn't do that but uh, we could we could add that later um, and now that we've created the user object, what we need to do is we need to sign the user up. So what we're going to say is user sign up, and that's an uppercase U, okay? And then this takes a couple parameters. There's two parameters you need. And to be honest, I'm not sure what this first one is. In every example I see, it always just says null. I don't know what they use this for, but that one's going to be null, okay? So we'll put a null there. And then in the second parameter, and this is very common for, for all of 
all of the systems in Parse. That you know, anytime you make a call to the database in Parse, you always set it up in this way. You create an object, and there's two properties to this object. One is called success, and the other one is called error. And the success and error object both take a function as a parameter. So here's my first property. It's success colon function, and then I type the whole syntax for function with the parentheses and the curly brackets, comma, and now I'll type the second property, error, colon, and then this is also a function, right? So I type in the full function syntax with the uh, parentheses and the curly brackets, right? And, you know, maybe I'll, I'll format this a little bit, so I'll, I'll hit a line return here and put another line return here and another one here and there, right? So now that kind of reads kind of nicely, right? And it's nested so I can see that, you know, inside sign up there's this success property, right? And then in here I'll have something to do when we succeed. And then here we've got the error and then we'll have something happen here if there's an error, right? So the success um, property returns stuff to you and so does error. So this function right here, it will return a value. It'll actually return um, two values for error. Okay, so for success, it'll return the user. So you've just created a new user, you've signed that user up, and then it actually returns the same user object to you. Okay, so you can do something with it in here if you like. Maybe for now, we'll just say console.log, and then we'll say, you know, register succeeded. How about succeeded? Maybe it should have been registration succeeded. There you go, right? So, and then if there's an error, we'll type in console log. Okay, and I'll say registration error. And the um, the error function will, will receive two parameters. The first one is the user object and the second one is an error message, or that's actually an error object. And this error object includes a property called message. So what I'm gonna do here, and this is like a very common, it's common to all of the transactions with parse. So, you know, whenever you have an error, it'll return an error, right? When you have one of these error handlers, right? It'll return an error, and then the error has a message property that, you know, is sort of a, you know, a text message telling you what the error was, right? So anyway, so there, there we're, we're all set up, right? Um, let's give it a test here, right? So I'll, I'll hide that and I'll go back to my web page here. I'll refresh and I'll check the console, make sure I don't have any errors. Now I'll go to the registration page and I'll type in test and then I'll type in my password of test and then I'll hit submit, and you can see, oh, I've got an error. It says, this is actually the error message. Remember, registration error, username test already taken. So it's kind of working, right? Um, let's make up a brand new user. Maybe I'll make, uh, I'll make a new and I'll call it new, right? And I'll give it a secret password that no one will ever guess. Um, and then I'll hit submit, and now it says registration succeeded, right? And if we go to the um, the parse page, and I go to my to the core area here, that shows all of the data. You can see I have six users right now, and then there's new is a user, and test was the user that already existed, so I couldn't overwrite that one, right? And then there's these are some other users that I made up while I was testing stuff, right? So anyway, so there we go. So that's the registration with Parse, and I hope that's helpful, and uh, thanks for watching.